Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we like to chat. We don't always get to work together. So, right. Yeah. We know. Uh, it's good to see you, by the way. Good to see you, too. My gosh, you know, we used to do the morning show together way Flash back Flashback back to the morning yeah, days. Yeah, a long time yeah. ago. Um, you know, we had another warm day here on the Sun Coast, obviously. Oh, yeah, very warm. 10 degrees above average. If you average in the day and nighttime temperatures and divide by two, you were 10 degrees above oh average. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And, uh, you know, you were doing that story about the, the abnormally warm temperatures and dry conditions and what it's done to our farmers. Mm -hmm. And uh, long range doesn't look too good. Oh. Well, that's not encouraging. <laughs> no, they come out with long range uh, temperature forecasts and precipitation forecasts every so often. And the latest one is continuing to show the effects of a La Nina, weak La Nina, at least lingering into the early parts of um, January and then kind of transitioning thereafter into uh, a neutral sort of situation. What a La Nina does is it actually sends our thunderstorms to the north and creates a very strong jet of air from west to east right across the center section of the country. That tends to keep our our cold polar air from sinking too far south with too much regularity so we don't get those real cold outbreaks of air like we had in 89 when it snowed Christmas Eve. Uh, we are forecast to be above average in our temperatures right straight through March and drier than average as well right straight through March with uh, very dry conditions in parts of the deep south. So. We'll see how that plays out, but right now it doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of weather relief for the drought-stricken south. 73 degrees, our air temperature, a dew point coming in at 65. Developed a little bit of a westerly wind flow today, a little bit of a sea breeze in the afternoon because the high pressure ridge, which has brought us those really warm temperatures uh, straight through the weekend and into Monday, has sunk a little bit further to the south and that has allowed for the, the winds to be lighter and allowed for a sea breeze in the afternoon to develop. So we got that to kind of help cool us down just a little bit, trigger off a shower or two too in inland areas though it wasn't much of a shower situation because just too thin a layer of moisture for that atmosphere to work with. 75 degrees Mayaka City, 74 in Arcadia, 74 in Wachula Parish at 77, Bradenton at 77, so is Northport. 78 degrees in Punta Gorda, 74 in Inglewood, 75 in Venice, and 73 at Longbow Key. So across the peninsula today was a beautiful day, a lot of sunshine. Few fair weather clouds building in the afternoon with that sea breeze as it penetrated inland and moved past the interstate. Picked up a few scattered showers. Now things are pretty quiet most everywhere and don't expect to see much in terms of rainfall. We've got some false echo going on right now across the region. That caused by the temperature structure of the atmosphere. It's not a big deal. Otherwise, we are looking at this line of showers, which is part of a cold front system, which is sagging southward and stalling out. That one's not the one that's going to do it for us. Back to the west, coming out of, the, uh, out of Canada and across the Rockies, exiting out into the plains, there is a blast of colder air that's producing some snow showers at high elevations and some frigid temperatures. That's the one that's going to do it. That low pressure area will rapidly sink south across the plains, team up with this stalled frontal boundary, or what's left of it. A little area of low pressure will develop on that and push the whole system through our area. Thursday night. Pretty rapid evolution actually over the course of the next several days. A fast moving line of showers and thunderstorms has the potential to produce some severe weather tomorrow in parts of the deep south as that front progresses. And then as we head into the next several days, the high pressure ridge continues to be pushed south. We have that westerly wind flow and the frontal boundary itself moves through here Thursday night. We get a slight chance at a shower, but the air is just really too dry to support much in the way of rainfall totals, so it's not going to add much to the rainfall bucket. We'll get some morning fog tomorrow, possibly lots of sunshine again tomorrow afternoon, and then we'll wait for those colder temperatures to arrive. Again, the bullseye tomorrow for any kind of severe weather, and it most likely won't be severe weather, just thunderstorms and maybe some gusty winds, is the deep south, not the state of Florida. We stay dry. Forecast looks like this for you boaters. Tonight, we'll have a northeast wind coming in at about 5 knots, shifting to the northwest at 10. Two-foot seas, a light chop. Couple of tides to talk about. We have a 5, had a 5 p.m. low tide. Next tide won't be until 1026. That one will be a high tide. And the forecast for the week ahead shows the effect of that front moving through Thursday night with a daytime high on Friday of only 65 and breezy as well. So it's going to be kind of a raw day Friday, but we warm right back up. And so far, New Year's Eve looks absolutely spectacular here. Could see some snow showers, though, in New York City.